Well, how are we getting on? So, today, today we want to talk about HRV. HRV is a tool that I use occasionally. I recommend it to several people, and the reason for this video is I recommended it just recently to somebody. And all the usual questions came up, what is it, why, blah, 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 blah. So we thought we'd do a quick, quick YouTube presentation on why it's useful, but it's not always useful to all people all the time. So HRV, heart rate variability. This differs from it being your heart rate because it's not tracking your heart rate, your pulse. Now you take your pulse now, you'll feel it in your wrist, under there, hopefully you all know how to take a pulse reading. Um, 20 seconds multiplied by three, 15 seconds multiplied by four, you know, whatever you like, or just count it for a minute and you'll get your heart rate. Heart rate variability then is the variance in the time between each pulse. If you look, you're all familiar with that shape of a heartbeat on the, the graph. We got a little peak and then the big drop and then another little one. You can think of that, that big one, that's called the R something. Oh, it's gone. I should know this. But anyway, the distance between that and the next big one is the RR interval. Now, I knew that bit. The RR interval is not always the same. We're not clockwork. So if your heart rate, if your resting heart rate is 60 beats per minute, you'd think... That's one per second, but it isn't. Your heart will be, say, on the zero, and then the next beat might be on one second. The next one might be on 0.8, and the next one on 1.2, and the next one on 0.9, and the next one on something, something. And it, it varies. It's longer and shorter. And the more that varies, the more that tells you your central nervous system, your arousal level is, your arousal is quite low, your central nervous system is quite relaxed, you're moving towards a sort of balanced state. We imagine our arousal state, our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system, like a seesaw, yeah, as one goes up, the other goes down, and that's a good thing. We don't want it stuck too far on one side or the other side, you want it able to move between the two. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, a high interval, i.e. lots of variance, a high HRV reading, I should say, which means lots of variance, those intervals are constantly changing, suggests you're quite relaxed, you're quite recovered, you're quite ready, there's no real threat going on in the system. Now, that would suggest we're moving towards parasympathetic, that seesaw's tilting a little bit one way, but not too much. If your HRV score is quite low, as in there's not much variety, the variance is low, that would suggest that our seesaw is tilting and the sympathetic is going up, our arousal is going up, we are under stress now. The key here is, where is the stress coming from? Is it illness? We are drinking last night. Is it the day before a competition? Have you been training really hard? Have you a lot of work stress on? Could be any number of things. Are you getting sick? And this is where the confusion comes in. Um, an old athlete, well, an old athlete, an old client who was an athlete at the time, he was a mountain biker, we were talking about HRV one day and he tried it, didn't like it. And the reason he didn't like it was, the day before a big event, he always got a really, what he construed as being a poor reading. The HRV app would be telling him, it's time to rest. But he's a competition coming up, he's an event. What that was reading was his own anxiety, his own stress, the pre-game nerves is what it was reading. 
he didn't need to rest. His body was actually prepped. It was aroused. It was ready. It was gonna. It was out ready to destroy. And <clears throat> that's what he did. He, 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 you know, he was a prolific mountain bike athlete. Um, so HRV score it doesn't honestly tell you if you're ready, if you're recovered, if you're relaxed. But what it does, it gives you an objective measure. This is where it can be handy. <clears throat> if you're a very busy athlete, hard-working athlete, or you have a chronic illness, then you're constantly dealing with stress and recovery, stress and recovery. HRB can be a useful tool in helping you navigate the landscape and learning what works for you, what doesn't work for you. If you're eating certain things, is it slowing down your recovery? If you're eating certain things, is it speeding up your recovery? Are you sleeping enough? Are you actually training hard enough or are you training too hard? And all these things, these are all questions you need to ask, but that HRV score can help monitor, I think is a good word, monitor if you make a change, does it have a positive or negative effect? For the rest of us who are not chronic illness sufferers, who are not full-time or hard-charging athletes, HRV could be a tool that helps us learn. Like I said, it's a subjective, sorry, it's an objective, it's an objective value. You stick your heart rate monitor on, yeah, use the chest straps, you download an app, and there's many of them, a lot of them are subscription based. Elite HRV is a free one, I like Elite HRV. Um, It'll cost me, as a coach, a subscription to monitor several people, but it's not the hundreds and hundreds of pounds that some of the others are. <clears throat> and if you take your HRV reading on a regular basis, minimum sort of three a week, you get to see trends happening. Now, if you then change your diet slightly, take out something that you think might have been irritating your bowel, something that upsets your, your system a little bit. You take that out, and then you watch your HRV score, see if it changes. If you've taken on a new training program, expect to see an acute change, the, the, the body adapts, but then over the coming weeks and maybe the coming months, you can see if your HRV score is changing. And that's a good thing. Your actual HRV score is usually given a number out of 100, between 0 and 100. The higher it is, the more parasympathetic you might be, and the lower it is, the more you might be in a sympathetic state. But the 0 to 100 score, there's a lot of factors involved, that, including your own genetics, your own personality. Difficult to change. If you're a... If you are predisposed to sort of the strength power spectrum, the strength power end of the, the spectrum, you are a, a power lifter, you're a sprinter, you'd expect to be quite a low number. But if you're at the other end, if you're a, a free diver, if you're a, a marathon runner, a triathlete, you'd expect to be quite a high number. And it's maybe going to be difficult to get from one to the other. But you can see a slight up or down depending on lifestyle factors. Yes, we want it to trend up somewhat, because that would suggest an increase in our health. But that's not the goal, because if moving it too far up takes away from our strength power ability, is that really useful? Um, we don't all want to be endurance athletes. Now, so what do we got? HRV, really good tool, useful tool, but used in the right context. And then the context has to be, you can't just get your reading. Uh, sorry, um, I talked about the 0 to 100, that's your actual score, but most of the apps will give you a score out of 10 as well. Um, 
it goes from 0 to 10 to 0. On this side is your sympathetic or high arousal, on this side is your parasympathetic low arousal. And this is your daily, this is your sort of acute reading. You sort of, uh, blah, 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 blah. one, two, three would be red, four, five, six would be amber, seven, eight, nine, ten would be green, um, more or less. Numbers might change a little bit. And usually, if you've got a green, that's a green light, traffic light system, green light, you can go train hard that day, job is a good one. If you've got an amber, take your foot off your gas a little bit. If you've got a red, consider having a rest day, consider doing some things to spark some sort of recovery. Which side it goes to, stress side or, uh, sorry, sympathetic or parasympathetic side, that then will determine some further investigation. If you see a sudden drop in the parasympathetic, are you getting sick? September time when I'm filming this, everybody's sick because the kids are back in school spreading germs just for fun. Maybe your body's telling you to rest. If it's all on the, over on the sympathetic side and you're, it's telling you you're high stress, why? What have you done? What's going on? Um, is there an ongoing project at work that is draining the life out of you? Have you been living off, I don't know, pot noodles and Fanta for the last... Pot noodles and Red Bull even for the last week. Do you know what I mean? Um, have you been training really hard for a number of weeks and you're due a bit of a rest day? Do you know what I mean? You have to ask these questions. You can't just take the number and go, right, this is what it is. This is why we keep training logs. This is why we're aware of our... We, we, we spend a bit of time learning about ourselves, our own personality, our own... Um, <clears throat> how we work we become self-aware and that subjective self-awareness can be buoyed up by an objective HIV measurement and the dogs just come crashing in the back door there with a teddy sis go on go get it um, so anyway heart rate variability useful tool Useful tool. Not as useful as some of the people who are selling these apps are making out. Um, not everybody needs to be on it. I would like people to use it short term to get that, to match up their subjective and objective perspective. And if you're a high level athlete, if you're chronically ill, then yeah, for you guys, Definitely something to consider. But anyway, oh, Molly is looking to play, so we're going to get her out, have a little run around, um, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. As always, like, comment, subscribe, go to Dave Hedges on that, and, um, and fire in a question or a comment. Let me know what you want me to talk about in future videos, in future newsletters. Alrighty? I'll talk to you soon. Right, Meg. What are we doing? Come here. Oi. Come here.